In this video, I'm going to try and provide you with a couple of math formulas you can use, simple math formulas that you can use to figure out where to place the control joints in a concrete slab and how deep they are going to need to be and a few other tips. Now here's an illustration of a concrete slab that's 20 foot by 12 feet and the control joints will be placed in the center or the midpoints of these and you can see it's six foot on the 12 foot side exactly half and 10 foot on the other side now the method used most of the time to figure out the, where these control joints go it's kind of kind of hard to explain but i'm going to just go for it here you will take the slab thickness for example here it's four inches and you will multiply it by two and three so we're going to multiply the four times two gives us eight and then the four times three gives us 12. well the control joints can go in in between those numbers except you're going to convert them to feet so a four inch slab we multiply it by two gives us eight that would be eight feet not eight inches and then we have a four inch slab we're going to multiply it by three that gives us 12 feet so for a four inch slab we are not going to want to place these control joints any further than 12 feet and there's no really good reason why they need to be spaced um, below eight feet so you don't need to have a four inch slab that's um, uh, 20 foot wide with five control joints in it. Feel free if you want to knock yourself out. If, you know, if that's the design you're actually trying to achieve, I would understand that. So I hope that makes sense. Now, they don't want you to cut more than 25% of the depth of a slab. So we would just divide 0.25 into the slab thickness that would give us one inch one quarter of the slab thickness um, and again if you feel like cutting you want to cut more knock yourself out you want to cut less knock yourself out these are just general rules to follow so if you had a six inch thick concrete slab um, we would divide six by a quarter or by 0.25 and I believe that would give us, trying to do my math here in my head, that would be 1.5. So that would be an inch and a half. And uh, so that's kind of what they're suggesting for a, uh, I don't want to say it's a minimum. Um, it sounds like it would be. Um, but when you cut them too deep, then you might take a chance. You're kind of risking a chance of cutting any structural reinforcement in there. I just wanted to point that out. Most grooving tools that you're going to use to put grooves in instead of cutting aren't going to be more than an inch um, in depth. So just to give you an idea. So if you have a 10 inch slab and you're using grooving tools, you're only going to get a one inch um, groove in there. So that would be uh, something to consider. So I hope that makes sense. Next step, we're going to take a look at a couple of different patterns, try and uh, break things up. Now, I just went ahead and added another section to the front of this, but I left the lines where they were. Now, the problem here is the inside corner. It's nice to always have a line off of the inside corners. This is where the cracks seem to happen the most. And I'm actually going to make another video on that to uh, provide you with a little more information if that's what you need. So you can see here, this is a different pattern than the previous one. And the reason being is the fact that there is an inside corner. It's nice to bring some lines off of the inside corner. And don't forget, look around at some of these driveways, um, sidewalks, you're, you're at a shopping mall. Take a look, look around and see how they've laid out their control joints. And it's not always going to be the same, trust me. I, uh, I look at some of these things and I think, what the heck were they thinking when they laid these things out? And so don't, um, you know, don't take the information in this video and expect it to work every single time for everyone because I, I, I've seen this stuff laid out in a variety of different ways and I've seen more cracks, you know, but I'll tell you what, these inside corners, make sure that you have a control joint 
or a saw cut line coming off of them. The next illustration will provide us with a little more complicated illustration. And uh, you can see here we're coming off of the corners. That's the first thing I'm going to do is come off of the corners with my lines. Um, and then I will divide up the rest of the um, slab as necessary. So again, this these corners will provide you with an excellent starting point. Um, and then you can split the rest of the slab up. So I hope that makes sense. Um, control joints, they can vary. Um, if you want to go by the rules that uh, some of the concrete professionals use, um, it's, it's just, it really is a, um, it's not an exact science. Um, so, uh, I mean, and when I say that, I'm just talking about when you look around and you see everything that's out there, you're, you're going to get confused. So just try and follow the basic principles in this video. And don't forget, control joints can be cut with a concrete saw, wet saw most of the time. Um, and they can also be installed during the installation process of the concrete right before it dries. One last point I would like to make is that some concrete slabs will need to have these cuts or control joints in them. Uh, obviously the control joints would need to be in them before the slab was finished. So if you were going to cut them with a saw, um, during uh, certain times of the year when temperatures get a little out of control, it's a little hot, you might need to cut these lines within 12 hours. Remember that 12 hours after the concrete slab has hardened and, and is hard enough to cut. I've actually seen people finish these slabs and within a couple hours they're cutting them um, when, it's, uh, when it's really hot out. So keep that in mind and hope this video helps. If it does, feel free to hit the old thumbs up button. Any questions, leave them in the comment area and I will answer them as soon as possible.